Good morning. As we study the book of 1 Samuel, we often see pictures of the gospel in a passage. For example, in chapter 15, we learn of the failure of King Saul to fully obey what God had said. It was clear, and he clearly disobeyed. God judged him and deemed him no longer trustworthy to lead his chosen people. God would begin his removal and replace him with a man after his own heart. All of us have likely been disappointed by a leader who failed or faltered in his ministry. Perhaps it was us. But what this knowledge can do is to point us to the perfect leader, Jesus Christ, the one who came and lived a perfect life. He died a perfect death, sacrificing himself to atone for our sin. When we see the failures of leaders, especially Christian ones, there are several responses we can make. First, we pray for them. Sincerely, pray for them. Second, we pray for ourselves, that we would not make the same mistakes they make, and that we would know how to minister in the situation. Third, we pray for those who will be disturbed by what they've seen or heard. We pray they will not falter in their faith because of a leader's failures. Fourth, we pray for the church, that God would raise up men and women of integrity to lead and serve in positions of authority. And then, as always, we look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. What helps us to do that is to rehearse the gospel. Listen, imperfect leaders will always be there because there's no one perfect save Jesus. So he must become the focal point of our lives, our thoughts, even our conversations. One way is to rehearse the gospel. And we do that by reading passages of Scripture that explain the work of Christ on the cross and what that means for us. So for today, listen to the word of the Lord from Ephesians 1. I'll read it, and you receive it, and then meditate on it throughout this day. God bless you as you do. Ephesians 1, starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he has lavished on us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. All I have because of Jesus All this promise won for me When he paid the highest ransom Once for always for my freedom
for listening to Mornings with Pastor Jim. This podcast is a ministry of Family Church PC. For more information or to contact us, go to familychurchpc.com. Have a blessed day.